Hi there, I had to do a video. I couldn't probably type all the things I wanted to say about this stone. Um, well, I could type it, but it's quicker to talk to you, so I'm talking. Here is a sunstone, Oregon sunstone, and it's definitely one of the most unusual um, pieces that I've had ever in my collection. And from the very outset, I want to warn you that if you buy this stone and you're just looking at it face on, holding it in your hand in pretty much ordinary light, it looks really dull. It looks dull and dirty and there's not a whole lot to it. So I'm saying that up at the first. Um, you know, it's, it's a stone which is fascinating from a collector's point of view. It's a stone that has all sorts of hidden patterns that are incredible in, inside. They're just very, very beautiful. It also has this, um, not a halo, but how do I call it? This ghostly pale green inside it, which is not showing in the photos. There's a bit of that going on. And there are incredible shards of patterns that travel through it. Now, inside, it's actually very ethereal. And when you look under the loop, it starts to get really compelling. It's, it seems to have these beautiful lines going here, there, and everywhere. It is actually very translucent within, even though it's a dark stone at the outer. Now, of course, one thing to think of is that this is 11 carats as well. So it might be that somebody was, would be tempted to cut it down. Um, you know, when you get a deep stone or a relatively large stone, it can be a lot darker because of it. So that's interesting to say that. But if you hold it up to the light and look at these shards and what they're doing, and they're not, I don't know enough about it to say if they're inclusions or what they are. I, in a sense, they, they're presenting like planes within the crystal, but they're definitely not fractures or anything like that. And if you hold it up, the watermelon effect is really, really pretty. And it captures itself in the back facets as being an array of pink and green. Um, you're probably seeing with most of the photos a deep maroon, a dark maroon. And to the eye, it is a dark maroon, almost black with, with stripes. But then when it's lit, oh, it is really, really interesting. And it comes into its own. Um, I actually personally do really love this stone. This is sort of like the fine wine, you know, to, to us collectors. It's um, something that you would seek out because you're just not going to see it again. But you would want to probably be a connoisseur collector to put this into um, what you have. Very, very interesting. I love it. But thank you. That's pretty much all I wanted to say. Um, I know the price of sunstone varies tremendously and it was exceptionally difficult to price this gem. And so basically all I've done is what I often do do, I just give it a set markup um, dependent on what I paid for it. And that was some time ago, I have to tell you, because it's actually been in my drawer for a long time. And I've had it there thinking, well, what do I say about it? You know, how do I explain it? There's a bit of Schiller, by the way. Have a look at just a bit of Schiller on the corner. Um, yeah, so it sort of sat there and it's just been, what do I do? I don't, I really don't know whether to bring it out or, or not. But if nothing else, it's a lovely thing to talk about. And thank you for visiting me um, one more time. I really appreciate it. If I sound distracted, I keep looking at it. I can't help myself. It's just got me absolutely mesmerized, this one, because it's got a whole lot of life um, going on inside it, which is really fascinating. Thank you again. I'm off to the gem show in a couple of weeks. If anyone's in Victoria, I might see you there. The, the, our Lapidary Club has one, our annual one, at um, Cranbourne. So do come along and introduce yourself if, uh, and drop me an email too if you're in Victoria and you think you might come down. Anyway, thanks again and I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye.